here's the uh, mechanical uh, design of the project. Um, it has a 16 by 16 by 6 geometry, which relies on five components. Your electrical box to contain all electrical uh, PCBs and everything needed to work. Uh, then the shoulder tower. The shoulder tower is the main structure that supports the entire um, arm. Um, and then we have the arm one, which connects the shoulder to the elbow. And then we have arm two, which connects the elbow to the wrist and the claw. The claw is a four bar linkage, which relies purely on the DCX8. It's here. Um, yeah, so the motor is placed to provide a structural in integrity to everything. We try shielding the motors in order to decrease the build volume and provide still a strong um, design. To control motor direction, we use an H-bridge circuit uh, with power MOSFETs as switches. Uh, we decided to use power MOSFETs instead of BJTs uh, because they have a lower voltage drop uh, of around 0.17 volts at maximum current drain of 5.42 volts for the largest motor used. Uh, BJT uh, at these uh, currents would have an approximate 0 0.7 voltage volt drop uh, per BJT. Additionally, power MOSFETs are voltage controlled, uh, which allows us to minimize any current being drawn from the Arduino. Uh, the PCB uh, was divided into three separate PCBs, one for each motor uh, being controlled by an H bridge. Uh, we decided to do this uh, for sort of real world uh, purposes, wherein if one circuit is destroyed, uh, all three don't need to be replaced. Only one needs to be replaced. And here's the 3D model of our circuit. So our entire simulation starts with this setup.m file where it populates the motor with the constants um, for the DCX motors and as well as creates the trajectories down here. Um, and here's the simulink, right? So these trajectories are then selected by a selecting, by a selecting constant. Um, and then these are fed into inverse kinematics with a desired approach angle of the end effector to make sure no marshmallow has been tipped over. Um, and then these these joint variables are then sent to the SCARA, the, the SCARA joint um, um, simulation or model subsystem where actually each of the joints are modeled, right? And then here, each of the torques are then outputted to this simulation X coupling block, which we see here, right? So these are then DMOXY's torques and sent to each of these um, uh, torque sources, which model the DCX motors. And of course, each of these joints also has a sensor on them right here, where we then uh, read the velocity and the rotor position, which is then multiplexed back and sent to Simulink, where we use them in the feedback for the joints. And then all this creates a um, the actual joint vector, and then we just use the direct kinematics problem using the homogeneous transformation matrix is what we're doing, instead of an analytical geometric approach. And then that just gets plotted out, out here on the various plots, which you saw in the demo at the start. So each of these joints um, in our controller, you just custom MATLAB PID block, um, which makes it pretty easy to port the PID control to the C firmware, which you can see here. Um, so our entire controller or code uses kind of a modular approach where we have this main file and these kinematics and PID header files that help with their respective functions. So we hop into the PID file, we can see here that it's all built off this PID structure that we created, which basically just holds um, the controller state for each controller that's instantiated, right? So the gains, for example, for the current integral, um, and then right here we have the EPT variable creation, which is created offline at the start, and we just feed it into each um, PID controller when it needs to be created, so it doesn't need to spend that unnecessary time computing it. And you can just see it here. This is the function that updates the PID controller given the certain set point and the actual current position from the encoder, which is computed in the main controller file with these um, um, ISR functions right here, where it increments these global encoder um, counters.